Hey, Junk Band back with uh, VintageRock.com. I'm here with my friend and bass player extraordinaire, the one and only Rudy Sarzo. Dude, good yeah, to see you. Hey, great to see you too. It's been a while. Yeah, well, you know, every year at the NAMM show, we always seem to bump into each other. Exactly. That's one of the great things I've been here. As a matter of fact, I ran into Adrian Vandenberg yesterday. I hadn't seen him in a couple of years. He's downstairs. And back since the White Snake days? That's right. Well, no, actually, uh, we, we ran into each other a couple of years ago, but he's such a great friend. I just love his company. Tell us about this fine piece of apparatus that you got this in front of you. This is my Rudy Sarzo signature bass right here, and that's me right there. From PV? From PV Electronics, yes. I've been playing PV in every tour and recording of either the bass or the amplifier or both for, for over 25 years now. So this is my, actually, this is 26 years that I've been using uh, PV equipment quite dedicated, aren't we? Uh, what's, what's different about this model than any other bass that you've used with them? Well, actually, this is a Cirrus model that co cosmetically actually looks like my original PV Sarzo bass that I had way back in the Whitesnake days. So, and it's home. Actually, I, I picked this one up, and I love it so much that I'm, I'm going to have to take it home with me. Nice. <laughs> right off the rack. Got that right off the rack. Nice. Yeah, you know, every time you f that you feel a perfect bass, you want to take it with you, but these are all made in Meridian, Mississippi, in the United States of America by Americans for, for the world to enjoy. You know, there's a lot of pride that goes into it. And that's one of the things that always attracted me about being part of the PB family is that it's an American-made product. And that's where rock and roll was built. It was built in, in the USA. So you can go down to the factory, man, and you can tell them what your rock and roll dreams are and they can create it for you. Absolutely. With, uh, not only with this model, but my original model, I, we spent a couple of years working on it. I went down to Meridian, to the factory. Uh, we designed everything from, from, from top to bottom. You know, all the, uh, not only the contour and the materials used in the base, but also the electronics and everything. So, yeah. It's an awesome looking piece of, piece of product. Though. Yeah, it's not something that you throw together. You know, it's a lot of love, a lot of dedication that goes into, into the instrument. So we'll be looking for you on the road in 2010 playing a model similar to this? Oh yeah, this, this, is, this is what I've been playing because I actually got the prototype and I've been playing it actually for a couple of years as you can tell in that photo. So yes, this is when you, when you see me on stage, you'll see me with one, well, one of these serious signature models. Tell us about touring plans for 2010. 2010, uh, going back on the road with Blue Oyster Cold, which I do that next, uh, next week, and also participating with Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. Uh, it's going to be, now it's going to be a reality show for VH1, and I'm participating in that, and uh, very exciting stuff. Yeah. Terrific, and you still got the, the uh, Off the Rails, uh, Rudy's book too is available too at fine booksellers. The sales on that were kind of screaming. Yeah, but you know, it's the reward when people come up to me and they thank me to, to, for sharing with them my memory of Randy, which is the reason why I wrote the book. I remember there was actually, there was uh, one of the shows that I went to back in the original Ozzy. What's that? Um, that was uh, New Haven, Connecticut. It was oh, on yeah, the first yeah. tour, yeah, yeah. and it was the first show back after yeah. you guys took a break. Yeah, yeah. we have we have actually spent a couple of days on a, on a boat. Not on the boat, but going through Martha's Vineyard in that area and enjoying the, the weather was fantastic. It was like in the summertime. You know. And it was Def Leppard's first American tour opening up for you. Yes, we had just returned. We did a sh the last show we... Motorhead opened up for us at the beginning of the tour. And the last show that we did with Motorhead, we went over to England, to Port Vale, to do a festival with them. Which, ironically, we replaced uh, Black Sabbath with Ronnie. <laughs> they pulled out of the show and, and we did that show, you know, Ozzy. And uh, then we flew right back. I mean, literally, within hours, we took the Concorde. So we got to New York before we left London. <laughs> so. And you remember this with great detail, by the way, with, with no cliff notes or anything in front of him. He just remembers this stuff right off the top of his head. It's simple. Like, it's like your first kiss. You remember that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it was such a memorable experience. That was the first time I had ever been on the road of that caliber. Before that, I was sleeping on the floor playing the Star Wars or the Whiskey and go, go you know. And all of a sudden, I become an arena player, and everything is brand new. You know, every single experience. The first time you walk, into an arena and you smell the place it's like oh yeah this this we're not in the whiskey anymore <laughs> yeah, i'll tell you it's something else man rudy i know you got to go you got to do a lot of signings over there. there's a lot of people that are waiting for you dude uh, once again pv bases rudy sarzo look for him with blue oyster called on the road check out the book too so thanks again bro always good to see you thank you so much junk man with vintagerock.com peace out